everybody, and welcome to Drum Circle Facilitation. We're working out of Tataku, um, pages 213 over to 224. So get your books out. I've assembled my own um, drum circle here with some of my friends and some smaller instruments. They don't make a lot of sound, but they look cool. Okay, so I'm going to go over the, the elements that I feel are important in this chapter. So as I'm reading these certain sections, you can just highlight those. Those are the, the main concepts that I want to get across. And I've also written some of them up here on the board. All right, so starting on 213, um, the first question is, what is a drum circle? So the term drum circle is often used to describe a group of people playing percussion instruments together, usually with creativity, self-expression, and community in mind. We might also uh, call such an event a group drumming process. In the case of drum circles for music therapy and wellness, goals and objectives may become more specific, often relating to social awareness, expression, self-awareness, and group cohesion. An adapted drum circle is an adaptation of a group drumming process in order to make it accessible to a group with special needs. So that's something you can think about in a particular group. How would you adapt a typical drum circle to that particular group of clients? Next element, what is a drum circle facilitator? And I notice that they use facilitator and not leader or director, right? The word facilitate is likely derived from the Latin word facilis, which means to make easier. A facilitator is someone who works to create an environment that fosters accessible growth, progress, and empowerment for others. A drum circle facilitator capitalizes on the access of accessibility of drums to make them easy to play and often to achieve other goals. If you are looking to create an environment for personal expression and initiative, you may offer each person an invitation to solo on a large instrument in the middle of the circle while everyone else accompanies, for example. Okay, so that's, I'm sure you've seen drum circle facilitators. I sent out a couple um, videos and you've also done it yourself. So next question on 213, when might I use group drumming as an intervention? I'll just read these just to get you thinking about when you could use them. When working with larger groups to provide an accessible and inclusive strategy as a warm up. When other group processes may be stuck. For stress relief when clients seem anxious at the outset of a session. To work on social skills and expression in a group context. To provide a successful group experience. To accommodate a rotating group membership or as a springboard for metaphorical frameworks. So I think those are some great um, uh, ideas about when you should use a drum circle. And of course, it doesn't just have, have to have drums in it, it could have any instruments in it. So next uh, question here is, are there any potential contraindications? So that means, when should you not use a drum circle? It's good to know this. Um, number one, group drumming can be overstimulating for some, particularly over longer periods of time. Number two, group drumming processes can be loud, particularly if the group chooses instruments that are high in volume. Keep instrumental parameters in mind. So you may want to go to shakers instead of drums, for example. And unstructured environment may not be safe for some clients, such as a participant who may be experiencing an acute psychotic episode. All right, so page 214 in Tataku, it says, what instruments should I use? And that will depend largely on what objectives you're looking to facilitate, the needs of the group, and the location of your session. You'll be looking to provide instruments with appropriate volume and appropriate physical qualities and adaptability for clients. So how do I direct the general environment of a drum circle? You can invite everybody to choose an instrument to play let everybody know it's not a drum class, but rather a gathering for everybody to explore playing with no experience necessary. Ask people to remove rings and hand jewelry. Offer mallets or hand tone strikers for those playing hand drums. Demonstrate hand drum and instrumental techniques so people are safe with the instruments. Keep in mind any therapeutic aims you have. If appropriate, mention them to the group. For instance, uh, I'm trying to help you learn to cooperate or to listen or to copy a rhythm 
or to feel a steady beat. And then provide a strong rhythmic ground. So how do we make music? Um, these are just typical ways to uh, interact rhythmically or non-rhythmically. Um, I've written them up here. The first one is rumbling. So uh, there's an old saying, you know, when in doubt, roll. So if things are falling apart or you want everybody to come together and they're not really together yet, you can just do this, rumble or roll, and then everybody stops, right? Um, riding means that everybody's playing the same rhythm. So let's say you play da, dicka, da, dicka, da, dicka, da, and everybody joins in and it's all playing the same rhythm. That's called riding. Um, active listening or resting. So you may incorporate silence in part of that. So if you cut people off and they have to maybe rest for a certain number of beats or wait for your cue. Next one is improvising. We've done a little bit of that. Very important um, uh, element of music make, making and allows a lot of freedom as long as you create a safe environment. And grounded rhythm means something that's underneath like a basic pulse you set up. We looked at the quarter note pulse, there's the accent quarter note pulse, and then there's the heartbeat pulse. Those are three typical grounded rhythms. All right, now uh, I was just on top of 215, now I'm on the middle of page 215. Uh, these are different ways that you can interact with your clients or they can interact with one another in terms of um, rhythmic vocabulary. So I've written them here. What is matching? Okay, that's a simultaneous play where two more people play the same manner. Um, so I play a rhythm and you play the same rhythm. We've got echo. An echo means, uh, let's say, one person plays a rhythm and the other person copies that same exact rhythm. Then we have call and response, which we sometimes use instead of echo colloquially, but actually technically a call is one rhythm and then the response is a different rhythm. And it's great for a leader to give the call and then to teach your clients to do that response. And then the fourth one is called an orbit. So let's say you have a semicircle of players, first person plays a rhythm and then they sort of pass it on to the next person and it orbits around the circle, one person playing at a time. Jumping to page six, uh, 216 at the bottom, I'm just gonna highlight uh, the facilitation styles. So how can you facilitate the group? Uh, the author has three um, places. Uh, one of them is no facilitation. The group plays freely and the facilitator just plays within the group. I think actually being anywhere. Um, looks like in the middle here, just playing, but not really telling the group what to do. There's a uh, side facilitation, so the facilitator is part of the circle and cues from his or her seat. And then the third one is the middle, where the facilitator stands in the middle of the circle and the drum circle and sort of directs it using um, arm gestures and maybe countdowns and then some counting, perhaps. And on page 217, um, I'm just going to highlight what are some of the directions that your group can take. So if you want to think of the parameters of music, uh, we have uh, rhythm, tempo, dynamics, and textures. All right, so you can, let's say you want to set up um, a rhythmic feel in 4-4, four, four, or you could set something up based on clave, maybe you want it in 6-8, maybe you want it as simple as quarter notes, all right? Um, playing faster or slower, you can have several lessons just on following that, changing tempo, dynamics, playing louder and softer and using silence, and textures, I just wanted to elaborate on that. So I think of textures as different sound qualities and maybe sort of instrument groups within the percussion section. So drums have a particular sound, shakers have a different sound, rattles um, or scrapers have a different texture, um, metal sounds, uh, those are also timbres, but you know, changing those things can be, make it a lot more fun and interesting. You can also give your clients a chance to choose those. Now, the last section here starts on 218, and these are hand gestures that you can use. Um, I like using as, as much nonverbal communication as possible, so just trying to um, tell people what you'd like them to do or direct them with the hand gestures or counting down without using your voice. You also don't have to yell that way. So um, the author shows a picture here of rumble on page two, 
uh, 218. So he's just doing this to rumble or roll. All right. Uh, this picture of Kalani down at the bottom of the page there, the K Pass Actions guy. On um, page 219, we have stop. You've got cross your hands and just stop like this. You can lean into the part of the group um, that you want to stop or stand back if you want the whole group to stop. We have on page 220, louder. All right, now you may have to explain that this means louder and not faster because not everybody's going to uh, pick up on that. Um, and then of course, softer you can do this or actually start to crouch down or do this for softer. So there's some nice pictures here. That's on 221. 222, I like this. So you don't have to count with your voice. You can count down, let's say, so that people are riding in the same pattern. So you can go four, then three, then two, and then one, and then the next section starts. On page 223, we have partitioning. So walking closer to a particular group, maybe your clave players, for example, and just partition and let them know that you're only directing that part and then you maybe want that section to go louder or softer or maybe stop or maybe roll, for example. There's a picture in 223. And then the last one uh, on page 224 is keep going. All right, so those are the highlighted parts I'd like you to uh, pay most attention to in the drum circle facilitation area. Thank you.